May the Lord give you his peace. Today is January 7th, the servant of God, Jane of St. Erasmus. Our reading is from the Pavarella's Round Table by Sister Mary Aquina Barth, OSF, published in 1939 by the Sisters of Mary Immaculate, Juliet, Illinois. January 7th, servant of God, Jane of St. Erasmus, widow, second order. Born in the year 1575, Jane descended from a distinguished family in Hanalt. It seems that she was destined by God to be a model to Christian women in the secular as well as in the religious state. After a pious youth spent in innocence, she was married in her 28th year to a nobleman of the Netherlands, Erasmus of Shigan, whose family at the time, when forceful attempts were being made to introduce the Calvinist heresy in the Netherlands, had nevertheless remained true to the Catholic faith. Erasmus occupied high rank in the army of the King of Spain, to whom the Netherlands belonged at that time. The marriage was blessed with the birth of a little daughter whom God Almighty called very early to himself. Jane had very little comfort in her husband. He loved society and games of chance, and his vanity and ambition often caused him to become involved in bloody quarrels. His good wife endeavored to win his heart. She settled many of his disputes and once even cast herself between two drawn swords in a duel. She sought strength and consolation in her intercourse with God, with whom she conversed like a child with its father. She was much devoted to prayer. When she was at prayer, she experienced neither hunger nor thirst, neither cold nor heat. Yet she did not, on that account, neglect any of her household duties. With all courtesy, she also received the company who were at times invited at the wish of her husband. And added to that, she was a true mother to the poor and the sick. Such virtue, virtue caused her husband to be converted to better ways. A true believer at heart, as he had always been, he resolved to make a pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and he returned from there a pious Christian. During his absence, his devoted wife experienced a mighty impulse to enter the convent, and after severely, severely testing her vocation, she believed the call came from heaven. Upon the return of her husband, she asked him for leave to follow the call. But having since his conversion learned to value his virtuous wife, he did not want to hear of a separation. But Jane continued in plead, uh, to plead. And as her vocation was approved by the most experienced directors in the spiritual life, even the Archbishop of Cambrai, supporting her petition, her husband at length resolved on his part to make the sacrifice to God. He himself accompanied his wife to the convent of Philipville, where the rule of St. Clair was observed in its primitive rigor. Although she was already 55 years old, Jane cheerfully observed the strictest practices of the novices, went barefoot, and looked upon herself as the lowliest servant in the convent. In gratitude to her husband who permitted her to enter, she called herself by his name, Jane of St. Erasmus. She pledged him the best of all her merits, and also offered, when his death drew near, to suffer his purgatory. Jane survived for 19 years, a model for everyone in the convent. She experienced extraordinary graces from God. Frequently she was seen in ecstasy and raised above the earth. If she so much as glanced at a picture of our Lord at the pillar of the scourging, which hung in the choir, she broke out in tears of the tenderest, tenderest compassion. When it was forbidden her to look at it any more, she never again directed her glance in that direction, because she held obedience in greater esteem than sentiments of devotion. At the last, she was tried with long and painful sufferings in all the members of her body. In that condition, a glance at the image of the crucified was her dearest comfort. Looking at it, she used to say the little prayer, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, may this victorious title protect us and preserve us from all evil. She, she actually had the prayer on her lips and was raising her head in order to make the sign of the cross as she said it, when our Lord took into himself the soul that had been found so faithful. It was the year 1649. 
Our meditation today is on perseverance in prayer. Consider how faithfully the servant of God, Jane, observed the admonition of our divine Savior. We ought to pray and not to faint. In every situation in life, she sought by means of prayer to obtain the necessary help from heaven, and her prayer was not in vain. Through prayer, she pres preserved her innocence in all the dangers of her youth. Through prayer, she obtained in the married state the conversion of her husband. Through prayer, she rose to the highest perfection in the convent. Do you, in like manner, avail yourself of the divine assistance in every situation? Do you always endeavor to obtain it through prayer? Consider how this servant of God persevered in prayer in the various situations of life. Never did she allow her usual devotion to suffer. Her devotion was always so lively that she appeared to notice nothing of what was going on about her. At the same time, she fulfilled her household duties with fidelity since prayer could not otherwise be pleasing to God. And in difficult situations, as when she felt the call to the religious life, she redoubled her prayers and pleaded with her with ever greater confidence until God heard her. Have you been as persevering in the past in your daily prayers, in their devout performance, in their faithful fulfillment of your duties and special exercises of devotion? He that wavereth and has no confidence let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Especially do we need persevering prayer in the time of suffering, whether it be exterior or interior. In her long and painful illness, therefore, Jane did not desist from recourse to God in short prayers and from keeping before her eyes the passion of Christ. As meritorious as suffering can be, we must remember that without special divine assistance, we cannot gain that merit, but may very easily make ourselves displeasing to God. Therefore, St. James admonishes, Is any of you sad? Let him pray. In tribulations and temptations, call upon the Lord. Do you observe this admonition? Prayer of the Church Lord Jesus Christ, who in the Garden of Olives has taught us by word and example to pray in order that we may overcome the dangers of temptation. Grant us the grace that we may always be devoted to prayer and may merit to obtain its abundant fruits, who live and reign us forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he show his face to have mercy upon you, turn his countenance toward you, give you his peace. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pax Eponum.